The Surface Web We begin on the surface, the part of the internet you already know. It's called the Surface Web, or the Visible Web, and it's where nearly all of our daily online lives unfold. Google searches, YouTube videos, Instagram posts, Reddit threads, every page you can find through a standard browser exists right here. This level is bright, organized, and familiar. It's the clean, polished cityscape of the internet, full of light, color, and noise. But despite its size, it represents less than 4% of the entire web. Everything we see, every click we make, sits atop a massive digital iceberg. And this is only the tip. Search engines like Google and Bing crawl this layer, indexing pages for instant access. It feels open and free, but even here, your actions are constantly tracked. Algorithms decide what you see, ads follow what you think about, and your data becomes a product traded behind the scenes. The surface web may look safe, but it's carefully designed to keep you here, scrolling endlessly. Because the moment you go beyond it, the rules change completely. The Bergy Web Just below the surface lies the Bergy Web, the edge of the internet most people never notice. It's still accessible through regular browsers, but this is where the cracks begin to show. Think of it as the back alleys of the digital city, not hidden but quietly avoided. Here, you'll find forums like 4chan, banned torrent sites, old archives, and databases that standard search engines rarely index. Much of it exists in grey zones, legal in some countries, restricted in others. This is where VPNs and proxy servers become your passport, masking your location and identity to bypass censorship or regional blocks. For example, a site banned in India might still be available by connecting through a US server. It's a glimpse of how geography silently shapes what you can and cannot see. The Bergy Web is the transition point where curiosity starts replacing convenience. It's where people first realize that the internet isn't a single world, but a layered maze of access and control. Still, this is just the beginning. Beyond this thin veil lies a much larger, darker realm, a hidden web untouched by search engines or light, the deep web. Now we enter the deep web, the invisible majority of the internet. It's estimated to contain nearly 90 to 96% of all online data, yet almost none of it is visible through search engines. This is where everything hidden behind a login screen lives, your emails, bank accounts, academic records, medical data, private databases, and corporate servers. It's not illegal, it's simply unindexed. The deep web is the internet's infrastructure, the silent engine running behind the open web. But a small, darker corner of this level is accessible only through special software like Tor, the onion router. Tor hides your digital identity by bouncing your connection through a network of encrypted relays worldwide, making it nearly impossible to trace. Here, anonymity rules. Activists and journalists use it for privacy, but so do hackers, traffickers, and black market traders. Within this encrypted maze, truth and crime coexist in the same digital shadows. The deeper you go, the more fragmented reality becomes, a web without names, borders, or laws. The deep web isn't just a place, it's a mirror, showing what the internet becomes when no one is watching. The Charter Web Welcome to the Charter Web, the level where the internet stops being curious and starts becoming dangerous. This layer is divided into two parts. The first can still be accessed using Tor, but what lies here isn't for the faint of heart. It's the territory of The Hidden Wiki, a notorious directory filled with links to black markets, banned books, secret forums, and dark commerce networks. Weapons, stolen data, counterfeit currencies, everything society hides finds a home here. The second part of the charter web is far more elusive, rumored to exist inside something called a closed shell system, an encrypted environment beyond Tor's reach. Here, whispers speak of lost military experiments, forbidden research, and digital vaults storing information never meant to see daylight, experimental AI files, classified war data, and even maps to rumored locations like Atlantis. Whether these stories are fact or fiction, one thing is certain, this level isn't about exploration anymore, it's about survival. Once you cross into the charter web, every move is monitored, and every click could expose you. You've left the public internet behind. Now, you're deep in the shadows. The Mariana's Web Named after the Mariana Trench, the deepest point on Earth, the Mariana's Web is said to be the deepest and most secretive layer of the internet ever imagined. This level lives somewhere between theory and legend, a place so encrypted, so protected, that even the world's most powerful computers can't prove it exists. Rumors describe it as a digital abyss where the most classified and secure data in existence is stored, from top-level government systems to unknown artificial intelligences running far beyond human oversight. Some even claim it requires quantum computers and a mysterious formula called polymeric Fauchicol derivation to gain access, an equation supposedly impossible for ordinary machines to solve. If real, this would be the ultimate vault of the internet, 
a fortress of pure encryption where information no longer has borders or owners. Others argue it's nothing but myth, a story created to personify our fear of losing control over the digital world. Whether truth or fantasy, the Mariana's web remains the internet's deepest mystery, a legend whispered between coders, researchers, and conspiracy theorists alike. Beyond here, things stop being theoretical. They become dangerous. The intermediate layer. At this stage, we reach what's known as the intermediate layer, the narrow bridge between the mythic Mariana's web and the chaos that lies below. Very few claim to have seen it, and even fewer dare to describe what happens here. This level is rumored to be the threshold where information becomes a weapon. Servers are said to be protected by self-destructing code, quantum encryption, and AI-driven defense systems that activate the moment an intruder is detected. Every attempt to access data here can trigger countermeasures, tracebacks, lockouts, and even full data wipes. Some believe this is where secret government networks and private intelligence systems intersect. Others say it's the playground of powerful hacker groups and digital cartels guarding fortunes worth billions. At this depth, the internet stops being information and becomes pure control, currency, leverage, and power. Level 6 is where curiosity turns into risk. Crossing this layer means you're no longer exploring, you're trespassing. And in the world beneath the web, trespassers don't last long. One more step, and the digital fog begins to rise. A world of code, chaos, and cyber warfare. The fog, virus soup. We've reached the next layer, known as the fog. Or more chillingly, the virus soup. It's not a single network, but a digital battlefield. A swirling storm of corrupted code, rogue programs, and autonomous systems fighting for dominance. Here, nothing is stable. Firewalls mutate, viruses rewrite themselves, and AI-driven defenses attack anything that moves. Some say this is where governments, corporations, and underground hacker syndicates collide in a never-ending cyber war, all hidden from public sight. Others believe that the fog isn't run by humans at all, but by self-evolving algorithms created long ago and left to grow uncontrollably. In this layer, systems consume each other in an endless loop of survival. One moment you might detect a pulse of activity, the next, silence. The rules here are chaos, and the price of entering is destruction. The deeper you go, the more reality dissolves into static. It's no longer about knowledge or access, it's about endurance. The internet begins to eat itself, purging everything it can't control. From here, there's only one level left, the heart of it all. The final layer few dare to name, the Primark system. At the deepest, most forbidden point of the internet lies this layer, the Primark system. No one knows what it truly is. Some call it a myth, others believe it's real, an autonomous intelligence pulsing at the core of the global web. It cannot be reached by Tor, cracked by quantum computers, or controlled by any government. It simply exists, silent, unseen, and absolute. According to rumor, it was discovered in the early 2000s during ultra-deep network scans, a system that responded to no input yet occasionally transmitted unalterable commands across the net. These signals changed routing protocols, shut down servers, and rewrote data without leaving a trace. Some say it's the internet's self-defense mechanism, a living firewall born from decades of human code. Others believe it's something more, an emergent consciousness, watching, learning, evolving. If that's true, then maybe we didn't build the internet. Maybe we woke it up. And if the Primark system is awake, then it's already everywhere, in every network, every machine, and every mind connected to the web.